Okay, so today I'm going to do a, a quick video of the stint planning spreadsheet that I created for our team, SimCity Racing, that I'm making available to the public. There's a longer 40-minute version of this video if you want to see all the powerful details. This video is just if you want to use it in, a, in its simplest form and not expose all the more powerful features. So it'll be quicker, probably about a 10-minute video, and uh, I will make a link to the spreadsheet available um, in the description. Okay, so let me turn over to the desktop view. This is the spreadsheet. There's a few different tabs in here. Uh, the race parameter tabs is where you provide overall inputs, like duration and fuel levels and so on. Um, stints tab is where you'll see all the stints get, get worn out or broken out, you know, per driver um, and the stint times and fuel usages and so on. Um, there's other tabs like optional performance and which you won't use if you're using the simple version. So I'm going to turn this off. And uh, car metrics and track metrics are databases of metrics about the tracks. And I'll come back to that a bit. And then there's a tab for all drivers where you can enter in drivers in their time zone offset. Okay. Only enter data into red fields. Only enter data into red fields. And I might even say that one more time. Because if you enter data in black fields, you're going to break the spreadsheet. Don't mean to point my finger too much. Anyway, the uh, first thing you want to do is select the track and then the car. And by selecting the track, uh, let's say I'll select Watkins Glen. Um, that goes and gets the pit lane loss time. And I'll go back to, you know, see it's 26 seconds. I'm going to go back and change it to Sebring. And it's now 21 seconds. The car brings in data like the fuel tank size, the fuel flow rate, the time to change tires, whether or not you can change tires and fuel at the same time. So if I select this as a BMW GTE, you can't take tires and fuel at the same time. So the time to do a pit with fuel only is different than the time to do fuel and tire. But if you go back and you select an Audi where you can change tires and fuel at the same time, these two numbers would be the same. Okay, let me just go over the basics of the input here. Uh, there's race duration, fuel, tires, um, and we'll, we'll just cover those really quickly. So the duration, you enter that in as hours, colon minutes, colon seconds. That's the number of hours or minutes the race is. The start time at GMT, um, so this is real life start time. And then there's the in-sin game time that you start. Um, this is only useful if you want to know you know, for longer races, like 6, 12-hour, 24-hour races, that can be useful to understand uh, track temperatures and maybe predicting whether you want to double stint tires or not. Um, then coming down to the fuel section, you don't enter much here, just, you know, the maximum tank size allowed. You know, 100% is the default, um, but, you know, you could enter in 50%, for example, and it would say, okay, the maximum fuel tank is 52 liters. You also want to enter in the, the amount of fuel you're going to use on the pace lap because then that means the starting, when you first start the actual race after your pace lap, you'll have less than the maximum allowed, obviously. And that can be important because it will change the number of laps you do in the first stint. If you just assume you have a full tank of fuel in the first stint, you may miss assume how many laps you can do. So let's go back to 100%. Um, and then over to the fuel non-fuel saving and fuel saving uh, if you're fuel save uh, sorry the non-fuel saving you enter in the fuel per lap and your average lap time and it calculates everything else it'll calculate for example the number of laps the difference between this and this is this is the actual number of laps but you can't do 0.11 lap and still make it around to the pit so it grounds it down um, it'll calculate how much fuel you'll probably use and will calculate your your stint times so your, your time actually driving on track your time for the, the stint plus the fuel, and then time for the stint plus the tires and the fuel. Now, in this case, because it's a GT3 car, it's the same. But again, if I change this to a GTE, you'll see that there's difference. Go back to the Audi. And then fuel saving, you indicate how many more laps you want to do while fuel saving, and it will calculate your, your fuel consumption you need to hit to, to do that. And you can also enter in your pace offset um, you know, how many tenths are you going to lose when you're fuel saving per lap? And that recalculates your lap time sort of 
59.7, it's 59.9, it's added that two tenths. It recalculates the stint times for you based on those metrics. And then the bottom left, you've got um, tire wear, you're entering the number of laps in the tire wear you had left. So go do some testing and figure that out and we'll predict your loss per lap and uh, for and you do that for your front and your rear and this is basically considered to be your worst case left and your worst case sorry your worst case front and your worst case rear usually lefts uh, and then it will determine at the end of the stint we'll have 69 percent on the front and 64 at the rear an offset of 5.1 a positive number means you got more tire wear in the rear a negative number means you got more tire wear in the front which will affect your balance obviously at the end of the run and here's a little table that shows you time to change tires and then if you were to change one two three or four tires how long will it take you don't really need this because in the stint sheet it will tell you whether or not the number of tires you're taking will be offset by the tires or not or the fuel you're taking with the assumption of course you're doing fuels and tires at the same time Okay, um, go over to driver's sheet. You just enter in your list of your drivers, the offset of the time zone they're in, and uh, there's a little checkbox up here where if you check it, um, right now the, the, the offset used is equal to their time zone difference, but if you check it, it basically moves the clocks back. So it takes that number and subtracts one from it, which is the current state we're in, so that's why it's checked. Um, if you look at track metrics, um, this is where the pit lane lost time comes from. And you'll notice that not all the track mix are here, metrics are here. So when you get to a new track, you'll go, you need to go to the sheet and you need to add in the actual track metric for pit lane lost time. And again, the pit lane lost time is the difference in lap time between a normal lap and a lap where you go into the pits, drive through the pits without taking tires and fuel and go out back on the track. Compare those two lap times, you'll get your pit lane lost time. I use JRT, which if you go out and do three or four laps or two or three laps actually in JRT, it will calculate the pit lane loss time for you and put it above your track map. The ones that you'll see are verified here are the, the, the day that I've gone out and personally verified, um, just so you know that that's, you know, which values are accurate. Um, and under car metrics, that same verified stuff shows up here and other fields as well. Um, so for example, here to calculate the fuel flow rate, I, I enter in how many fuel, how many liters of fuel and how long it took. And you can do that by doing a test, calculates a flow rate. I convert that to a time and I verified that. Now the ones that are blank are not verified in this case, uh, tire change time. I've gone in and verified how long it takes to change tires in different cars, um, GT threes and GT fours and GTEs. They're not all exactly the same, which is interesting data in of itself. Um, it tells you which ones, which ones I've verified. You notice in the case of the Ford GT3, I've verified the tire data, but I haven't verified the fuel flow rate. It's probably pretty close to other GT3 cars, but it will be a little different. And the fuel tank size I've also not verified, and that's why it's not listed as verified. Um, but because it is a GT3 car, um, this can you take tires and fuel uh, should be checked, actually. Um, yeah, I just added that just a moment ago, and that's why it was wrong. But basically, um, if you see verified here, then I have verified that that's accurate. So in the case of uh, GTE cars, I've verified that they can't shake uh, tires and fuel at the same time. But in the case of a Dallara I8, I haven't verified whether it can or can't. I don't know. Um, I would need to load each of these cars in to get this data. Um, but I'm just showing you how this all has worked or used. You can collapse the stuff if you just to make it prettier and, and see what you see, but that's the point of it. All right, so let's go to stints. Um, you select your driver here on the left, and by selecting the driver here, it affects whether or not this column selects or indicates they're in the car. So uh, in this case, um, I've selected John for stint five here, so it doesn't show me in the car, but if I select me, and now automatically changes that to show me in the car. The available column is indicating, you know, each driver can go in and click on which time slots they're available and they can look at their local time slots to verify they're available. And the local time slots based on this time offset from GMT, which comes from here. 
Okay, so that's how this all works. And then the last thing is it calculates your driver time. So based on when you're in the car, it adds this up and it, it gives you your, your total driver time. So there's four, four time slots. So it's added those four time slots to give me three hours and 47 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so there are other fields you can expand and collapse here. If you want to know what they are, look at the longer video, but I'm not going to go through them. I'm just going to do the simple view of this in this video. The uh, in-sim start time is this is the in-sim time that that stint starts, um, which is useful if you're, you're using more powerful features, less useful if you're not. Um, but it's there nonetheless if you want to know, you know, is it cool, is it hot, whatever. The save fuel. Um, change that to save fuel. And make that a little bigger. Um, so in the stints you want to change fuel or save fuel, if you click this, it'll then use the metrics from this fuel saving, and that will impact your uh, lap times, it'll impact your, your therefore your stint time, it'll impact the number of laps you're doing. So in this case, it's using 29 laps, which is there, versus the non-fuel saving is 28 laps. So if I change this back to this, it goes to 28. Now notice the first stint, it's it's 27 laps. And if I click this, it goes to 28. And that's, again, because of this thing here where you use a bit of fuel in the first lap, so you're not actually stuck for, on the pace lap, so you're not actually using a full tank of gas. So that's why it's less in the first stint. Um, this next field here, amount used, is the fuel that you're adding. Um, so fuel added and the actual amount that you're going to add, this is calculated for you. It'll be a little off but it's proven to be pretty accurate if you want to um, look at that and say okay well i've got 20 30 liters to play with that i could spread on other stints and maybe take less fuel on some other stints to gain some track position maybe that's a value so if, so if you use this override column here see that it says 103 if you change this to say 90 now you're using 90 liters in that um, stint and it, you can see it's now added or increased in the amount of fuel you need on the last one. Do it again. So now you can see that in this case, uh, the last stint is basically full tank. So you can use that to, you know, maybe pit early, gain track position if you think that's valuable. And all of this affects things like um, your your pit stop time. So here because I'm only using 90 liters, my pit stop time is different than if I was using, you know, the full tank, which is a hundred in uh, a minute, sorry, minute, two seconds. So that's how that gets incorporated. This next one here is the number of tires you select in a pit stop. <clears throat> and then the, the column to the right of that says is, uh, do, do these tires, do they get covered by the fuel that I'm adding? So the last one here is usually where you would worry about it. But for example, let's say I, I put in, I don't know, 40 liters here. You'll see that, well, 40 liters of fuel doesn't cover the time for four tires, and it will highlight that for you. So that's where it can be helpful if you want to know if the amount of tires you're going to add is going to cover the fuel that you're putting in. It'll also tell you your tire wear. Um, so if you put in zero here, um, you can see, well, if I took... You know, you start with four tires. I do the full stint, and you end, you end with 65% um, in the rear, 70 in the front. If I don't take tires, I'll end up with 30% in the rear, 40 in the front by the end of the second stint. If I took two tires, then it assumes you're putting them on the worst and then resets them to be basically new. Um, total number of laps that you're doing in the stint. Sorry, here you go. And then the total number of laps you're doing through the race. That's pretty straightforward. Your pit stop time, if that's useful to you. Um, just, to, just to show you that the values you're, at, you're entering over here affect things. And then your on time track, on, on track and pit time added together. So it'd be your, the amount of time you spend on the track plus your pit time gives you this. Your start time in GMT. So this is the GMT start time for the stint and this is the GMT end time for the stint. And then you can override the end time if you wanted to. So let's say you wanted to come in a bit early. Let's say at 25 a.m. 
So notice, you know, this is 73 liters here. If I, if I enter this time here, now you notice you need more fuel on the end of the stint because you've basically shortened this stint by some amount of time. So you could do it by entering fuel used here, or you can do it in time. It's up to you. Um, and then the race time remaining is just the number of minutes and hours that are remaining. So 11 hours, 10 hours, 9 hours, down to a negative. Once it gets to a negative number, that's when it realizes it's at the end of the race. Um, and this just means that uh, you'll pass the finish line. Um, and then 28 seconds after you pass the finish line will be the actual end of the clock. So then that's your last lap. Okay, um, I think that's the basics. Oh, and then there's a GMT clock up here, and that's always running. That tells you, you know, what time it is GMT, which is useful when comparing to these GMT times. And that's pretty much the basics. Uh, again, if you want to um, learn more about how to use the more powerful features, which there are a few, like the uh, optional time of day performance and the for driver performance on, you know, lap times and fuel usage and pace loss while they're fuel saving and so on. You know, watch the other video, but um, this is the simple form, so I'm just keeping this straight forward and quick. Hope you enjoy.